for uh, for the participants for whom it is not clear uh, please try to rejoin this session or try to uh, remove the earphones that you are using and try to listen directly through the mobile phones if that also doesn't work try to use a different device like a laptop or if you are using a mobile then laptop and if you are using a laptop then try it on mobile okay dr swati we are live on uh, facebook so you can yeah. just Thank you, thank you, Dr. Satish, and um, thank you all the participants for joining us on time on this session on clean rooms. Um, this session is a technical uh, session uh, from one of the experts who have an experience of more than 50 years in this particular industry. And um, the importance of clean rooms has been uh, there always, this, this was a very important topic. It has been um, uh, applied in hospitals and pharma companies, pharma manufacturing um, units also. But it is more so important today because of the COVID times. We, we are even thinking of you know, buying filters or even we have bought filters for our homes also so that the air is clean. This, this industry has grown like anything. Clean rooms are requirement for hospitals, for pharma and whatnot in houses, in, um, especially in Delhi, it is uh, now a basic requirement because the pollution levels um, go up during these times. So the, the topic that we wanted to touch upon was contamination control and what science is uh, behind these designing of filters, what requirements are there, and who is going to help you out there if you're thinking of something, especially from pharma perspectives. So uh, I'm Swati Sena, joining uh, for you from Pharma State Academy, and I have with me Dr. Satish Gupta. And uh, this session uh, is brought to you by Pharma State Academy. The speaker for today is Mr. Sant Adwani. And um, many of us are knowing him, uh, yet I'll speak a few words about him. He has more than 50 years of experience. Um, uh, congrats on the half uh, century, sir, in the HVAC and clean room industry. He has worked in India and abroad for 15 years. He set up a contamination control company called AirTech and um, sold the same in 2011. He now runs a contamination control advisory service focusing on hospital operation theaters and sterile pharmaceutical manufacturing. So for our uh, clients, our learners from pharma manufacturing sector, he is the go-to person for sterile uh, pharmaceutical manufacturing designs. He conducts a lot of training programs on clean rooms. He is also a long-standing uh, member of ISHRE and IEST, the Institute of Environmental Science and Technology. He is Honorary Secretary of Contamination Control Society of India. He is also on International Technical Committee of ICCS. So this is uh, all I can brief you about uh, Sansa. More uh, sessions with him are uh, due now and we will be um, uh, interacting with him a lot and uh, making these sessions, uh, bringing these sessions to you uh, for uh, the benefit of the industry and professionals. So the topic today is clean room filters, the pharma perspective. And now I hand over the session to Mr. Sant Adwani. So please take us ahead uh, on this topic also, also we, we put up a question um, uh, at our social media handles about um, which seat uh, to choose while we are booking <laughs> uh, uh, airplane ticket for, for uh, you know, infection not to reach us or to reach us the least. So we will be answering that question also in this session. So over to you, Sansa. Uh, take us through with this. Uh, you can share the screen, sir. Right. Yes, now. I've shared the screen. Now mm -hmm. I'm. Yeah, yeah, it's coming. Now I'm putting it on to. Yeah. Wow. Nice. Yes, sir. It's there. Well, you're a very good teacher, Satish. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's very nice. Sir. It's pre presenting beautifully. It's coming now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you, Swati, for that very generous introduction. I want to thank Pharma State Academy for giving me this platform. Uh, 
it's very encouraging that an academy like Farmer State has taken the task of not only talking to top management of creating guys for only engineers, which was previously the case, but a broad based thing, broad based coverage of all the aspects and all everything of pharma. I hope to learn a lot from Pharma State also as while I keep contributing. Uh, the introduction has been gone through, except Swati didn't mention that I'm married to a very pretty Tibetan girl. <laughs> yes, sir. Sorry for that, sir. No issue, no issue. My wife's sitting behind, so I have to be careful. A uh, uh, millimeter is one thousandth of a meter. The micron or micrometer is one thousandth of a millimeter. And technology has gone further ahead. A nanometer is one thousandth of a micrometer or a micron. We restrict ourselves to microns in the current era of filtration. The domain visible to the naked eye starts at about 40 to 50 microns, and we have the heavy industrial ducts. Then it uh, goes down all the way to 0 0.001 micron, which are the gas molecules. In between, you have the pollens at about 10 to 20 microns, the bacteria at 0.2 to 5 microns, the viruses, which we look at closely at 0.01 to 0.1 micron. The diameter of a human hair is 100 microns. Well, right now the length of my hair is 100 microns. Uh, we are now faced with the coronavirus. So we got to know a little, we got to meet these guys and know some more about them. Uh, a 10 micron size is represented here next to a red blood cell, which is seven microns. You have a 2.5 micron, the importance which we'll look at later, which is five times the size of a bacteria, 0.5 microns. These are all average sizes, which is five times the size of a virus, 0.1 micron. So we're really dealing with this insidious character who has penetrated our defenses. What is a clean room? Uh, when I started the clean room business, a lot of my wife's friends said, oh, how nice, can you come and clean our house as well? I said, hey guys, that's not the sort of clean room. A clean room is an enclosed space in which airborne particulates, contaminants and pollutants are kept within strict limits. In industry, clean rooms are used in the manufacture and servicing of hardware such as integrated circuits, hard drives. We've, you've seen always the, the videos and photos of all these guys in those uniforms walking around. In biotechnology and medicine, clean rooms are used when it's necessary to ensure an environment free of bacteria, viruses, or other pathogens, which all pharma manufacturing does. Hospitals do that. And now we are trying to do it to save, protect ourselves from this virus. In addition, the temperature and humidity may be controlled. <clears throat> the clean room specifications for particulate matter, such as dust, are defined according to the maximum allowable particle diameter, let's say 0.1 micron, 0.5, for even uh, rooms of higher grade, even five microns, and also according to the maximum allowable number of particles per unit volume. In the old days, it was very easy. You had the US Federal Standard 209E, a class 100, meant 100 particles of 0.5 microns per cubic foot, class 1000 was 1000 particles and so on. Now we have the metric system. We have the tables, which you'll see later, ISO class five, which is class 100 of the old days, is 3,520 particles of 0.5 microns per cubic meter. This is the 
viable, non viable particles. For viable particles, non particle contaminants, the maximum allowable density in terms of microbes per cubic meter or molecules per cubic meter is specified, thus, vagacious contaminants and CFUs, colony forming units. Four fundamental rules apply to clean rooms. Contaminants must not be introduced into the controlled environment from the outside, hence good filtration. The apparatus within the controlled environment must not generate or otherwise give rise to contaminants. For example, as a result of friction, chemical reactions or biological processes, we humans are the biggest contaminants in the clean rooms, we shed about 50,000 particles of skin scales every hour. When I talk, I generate 10,000 particles of 0.5 micron per minute. Contaminants must not be allowed to accumulate in the controlled environment. You have to flush them out. There has to be the flushing system. Fourth, existing contaminants must be eliminated to the greatest extent possible and as rapidly as possible. So in a very clean room, in a very serious clean room, or class 100 or class 10, you will have a continuous flow, what they call laminar flow. No air is recirculated. What comes in is sent out immediately, flushing the entire atmosphere. As you go down to class 10,000, that's ESO class seven, then you allow about 30 to 50 air changes per hour. As the air goes over the HEPA filter, it gets clean. This is cleaning by dilution. The laminar flow was cleaning by flushing. The clean room applications are widespread in today's environment, electronics industry, Anyone who works with computers will know that certain factors can cause a lot of damage, including temperature, humidity, static, biotechnology, moving very fast, and that's a savior for us. Life sciences includes pharma manufacturing, hospitals, food manufacturing. People have become conscious that uh, you can't have contamination while manufacturing food and that can cause serious problems. Hence, the control at the first stage. Automotive parts also, they find that everything works much better when it's in a clean environment. I did a clean room for Garvare Polyester, who are manufacturing videotapes, which are now a thing of the past. But they had a class 100 clean room, about 400 square feet. And they had a room on the side for slitting, which was about 50 square feet. And they said, oh, the manufacturer said, we don't need a clean room for that part. So I said, look, when we're doing a 400 square feet, let's extend that and include it in that area. It's not going to cost you so much more. They went ahead with it. And the cutting tools, which they were, which cost about 30,000 each, they were changing it every three days, because of the clean atmosphere, they now change it once a month. That friction and abrasion was not there, so the tool lasted that much more. Just an example how clean rooms help production, help saving. Isolation rooms for hospital COVID-19. Negative pressure, is always negative pressure, so that the contamination, which is the Virus cannot spread outside. It is contained within the room and exhausted through a special exhaust, through HEPA filters, and as I said, maybe even a burner to eliminate it. The negative pressure isolation rooms are required for quarantine patients with coronavirus to prevent droplets from sneezing, coughing, or exhalation. Exhalation and talking also generate particles, as I said, and contact transmission. Following the SARS outbreak in 2003, nothing much happened. A lot of hospitals showed interest, then lost interest as soon as SARS disappeared in about six months. 
we're kind of hoping that the same thing happens to this COVID-19 guy. And now the COVID-19, the need for viral disease containment space in hospitals and healthcare facilities is paramount. Uh, there's, the Chinese built a isolation room, 10,000 bed isolation room in one week's time. We're not as smart as the Chinese yet, but we can spend a lot of time converting and modifying our existing hospital rooms and existing rooms into isolation rooms, negative isolation rooms. The new definition of clean room now includes any area in which environmental controls are applied, like for food manufacturing, they would not necessarily go for a class 10,000 or ISO class seven room. They build clean room like rooms and facilities which reduce contaminants, but don't provide a limit on that. They don't meet any ISO standards. The ISO 14644 part one is the governing standard for this. Given this industry terminology is gravitating towards the term controlled environments. That's what ISO 14644 says, controlled environments and relative environments and relative areas. For areas which contaminants, temperature, pressure, static, humidity, or other elements of control, even if adherence to a clean room standard is not required. So clean rooms are used without using the word clean room, just saying controlled environment, not being very sticky about the grade of room. Importance of filters. Uh, a large portion of our time is spent indoors, especially nowadays. Particles less than one micron stay suspended in the air almost indefinitely. Large particles are captured in the mouth and throat and easily cleared from the body. The body has its own built-in mechanism for removing these. Small particles are captured deep within the lungs, creating problems. Certain small particles could also enter the human brain. The humans breathe 15 kg of air per day. So this is a lot of stuff that we have to filter out in the course of ventilation. For the types of filters, we will look at the European standard 779, the coarse filters, G1 to G4, the medium filters, M5 to M6. The coarse filters are tested with an average arrestance of synthetic dust. The medium filters are tested to an average efficiency for 0.4 micron particles that is generated with DHS or DOS DOS, fine filters, F7 to F9, minimum efficiency for 0.4 micron particles, the same standard EN779, and the aerosol filters, or what they call EPA filters, E10 to 12, HEPA filters, H13, H14, ALPA filters, U15, U17. The coarse filter and medium filters are used to protect building services from atmospheric dust and prevent indoor, uh, protect the indoor air quality for humans. The fine filters also support the indoor air quality and are used to keep interior spaces visibly clean. Every morning you go to your office desk and you find this thin layer of dust. You're gonna wipe it off before you start. Improve your filters, you'll eliminate that. Aerosol filters, the EPA, HEPA, and ALPA range, used to keep interior spaces free of bioaerosols and microscopic dust, used, as we said, in life sciences and electronic industry. For the fine filters, there were about a dozen standards. You had the EN 779 from Europe, the ASHRAE 52 from 0.2 from USA, the AFNOR from France, 
a Japanese standard, a South African standard, an Australian standard. So ISO said, look, hey guys, let's put everything together. And they came up with ISO 16890, which concerns itself essentially with three particle sizes, PM1, one micron, PM2.5, 2.5 microns, and PM10, 10 microns. These readings have been taken at various stations all over the world for the last 30 to 40 years. So all these data is available to us instead of working on a standard like EN 779 and 52.2, which don't really represent reality. As we said, the different classes of particulate matter are defined with 10, 2.5, and 1. The EPA, the WHO, and the European Union define PM10 as particulate matter which passes through a size selective inlet with a 50% efficiency cutoff at 10 micron aerodynamic diameter. And PM2.5 and 1 are similarly defined. Essentially, it says 50% efficiency at 10 microns minimum or for a PM10, PM2.5 minimum 50% efficiency at 2.5 microns and PM1 minimum efficiency of 50% at PM1. Air filter elements are evaluated in the laboratory by the ability to remove aerosol particulate expressed as the efficiency values of EPM1 EPM 2.5 and EPM 10. This is a table of the ISO 16890. Uh, you cannot compare exactly the 779 or the ASHRAE 52.2. A range may fall between the two filters. For example, the F7 of EN 779 does not meet the PM1 requirement of 50% to one micron. So it falls within the 2.5 category. The F9 is a PM1 filter. The ISO EPM1 corresponds to a MERV 13, which is from ASHRAE 52.2. I'm sorry I'm referring to a lot of standards, but the whole subject is standard driven. And if anybody needs help with these standards, I'm always available. Uh, please contact me anytime after 10 o'clock in the morning. I get up at 10. Uh, ISO PM 2.5 class filter will be an approximate match to MERV 11. <clears throat> 10 micron particles are caught, as we said earlier, in the nose and mouth, and the body has a very effective mechanism of expelling these. 2.5 to 10 enter the nasal cavities and trachea. I guess this is why that COVID testing, they stick that swab in your nose and down your throat. They're looking for things where these virus could hide or deposit. The one to 2.5 would mean the bronchial tubes and the bronchioles. The 0.1 micron alveoli and brain bloodstream could eventually enter your brain. HEPA filters. The first HEPA filter was designed in the 1940s by the R&D development firm, Arthur Little, under a government contract for preparing the atomic bomb. It was a major advancement in air filtration technology. The filter solved a critical need to control very small particles, which radionucleides, which were 0.3 microns. Now, uh, the real fact is the Germans discovered the HEPA filters at the end of World War I because they had a lot of deaths due to mustard gas, the mustard gas attacks. So they made these gas marks, which were equivalent to HEPA filters, but the Americans won the war. So they say they invented it. We'll go with that. HEPA filtration has evolved as technological breakthroughs in aerospace, pharmaceutical processing, photographic film manufacturing, data processing, and microcircuitry demand higher and higher levels of air cleanliness. 
the old 0.3 micron is gone. Now it's down to 0.1 to 0.2 microns. If not for HEPA filtration, such milestones as the lunar landing and the introduction of silicon chip might not have been achieved and adequate control of hazardous and toxic particles would not be possible. A HEPA filter, high efficiency particulate air filter, ALPA, which is used in the electronics industry, ultra low penetration air, percentage efficiency. How good a filter is at stopping particles passing through? Penetrations, one minus efficiency, how much particles pass through? Volumetric penetration, the average performance of the whole filter. Local penetration, actual leakage at a specific point on the filter face. Leak, a higher penetration that is permitted. Now a perfect filter would be, which had 100% efficiency down to one nanometer and had no pressure drop, but that doesn't exist. It's like having a wife who doesn't want to buy jewelry or having a husband who doesn't stop looking at girls after he's married. They don't exist. We have to live with these problems. The IEST is the Bible for the absolute filter. They came up with 11 grades, A through G, where they were tested earlier days, as I said, 0.3 micron. You had the standard filter defined as 24, 24 by 12,000 CFM at 25 mm pressure drop or one inch pressure drop and 99.97% efficiency down to 0.3 microns or a penetration of 0 0.03. As time has gone on, they've developed more tests and more grades. Now they also develop the uh, measure the 0.1 and 0.2 micron or what they call the MPPS, which we shall look at in a minute. If you see on one side, you have the collection efficiency for the global value, which is, as we said, the overall efficiency of the filter and the local leak value, which is the local leak at the particular point, at a particular point is taken there. For example, electronic industry, he says, hey guys, I don't care if it's 0.3 micron global, but if I got a small particle of 0.3 micron, it's going to short circuit my entire circuit. It's going to lap between the same. So they, they what we call scanning is done to check that the standard holds at every point, not only global efficiency, also the local efficiency. Like the ISO 16890, we had a plethora of standards for HEPA filters. The ISO came up with 29463, part one, classification, performance testing, marking, part two, aerosol production for testing, measuring equipment and particle counting statistics, part three, testing flat sheet filter media for using gas masks, etc. Test method for determining leakage of filter elements, scan method, are HEPA filters and panel filters. Test methods for filter elements which could not be scanned. These are the 13 classifications of the ISO 29463. This was 2011. In 2017, they made a revision and the major part of the revision was splitting this into two tables of six and seven. Uh, these ISO meetings are normally held in Hawaii and Tahiti and Miami and Las Vegas. So I guess they need reasons to make some changes. Nothing major has changed since 2011. These are the equivalent comparing the EN 1822 and the ISO standards, you had the EPA, the HEPA, and the ALPA classified into four, three, and six groups, combining the 13 filters, which again give you the 
arrestance, integral values, and local values. It's a nice table to have because a lot of consultants mention one and not the other. They don't give you a specific ISO 2946 standard. They may mention the IST or they may mention the 1822, at which state this table helps a lot in reconciling where we want to go to. Most penetrating particle size MPPS. 1940, again, go back to Arthur D. Little, they said the radionuclides were 0.3 microns, and it's the most difficult particle to trap. So every filter was designed to trap that because immediately anything above that was had a better efficiency, anything below that had a better efficiency. In reality, about 20, 25 years ago, they did some research and they came up the most penetrating particle size varies from 0.1 micron to 0.2 micron, depending on the media and the phase velocity. This figure illustrates the contribution to the photo, total filter efficiency from the components of diffusion and interception. Diffusion is the vibration of the van der Waals motion of the molecule, which contributes these are computed as if each component were a separate filter. Since interception efficiency increases with increasing particle size, while diffusion efficiency decreases, a minimum occurs where the separate efficiency curves intersect. This minimum efficiency defines the most penetrating particle size, MPPS. So the old days say 0.3 was, if anything is 0.3 better than that, no. It's, can be 0 0.1, 0 0.2, depending on the grade of media and the velocity across it. Efficiency testing of HEPA filters. You can do the volumetric testing, the scan testing, either manual or auto scan. The volumetric efficiency gives the overall efficiency of the filter. The basic acceptance criterion is that None of the penetration of the filter is higher than specified. In today's advanced technology, this test is rarely used. Everybody uses scanning. As I said, they want to see even at a particular point, one particle can come and damage the electronic part, or it can damage the whole lot batch of pharmaceutical production. It is, however, utilized in the nuclear industry with adequate safety factors because it's not possible to do scanning. It is also used for exhaust HEPA filters where exposure to the operator for scanning is not desirable. For example, in isolation rooms, hormone manufacturing. Hormone manufacturing is another tricky subject. You have to have these a negative room for that, negative pressure, because if the male gets introduced to a female hormone, he starts developing the wrong, wrong sort of bulges and if a female is exposed to the male hormone, they start developing facial hair. Actually, I don't know. I've seen a lot of women with facial hair. Anyway, so uh, you protect yourself from, pardon my bad jokes. The leak testing standards for testing HEPA filters, the IST has CC001 for HEPA and ALPA filters the 034 for HEPA and ALPA filter leak test, the part three test methods, the latest version is out in 2019, and this is used worldwide. ISO 16170, almost obsolete now, EN 1822, part five, obsolete, but some of the Europeans insist on that. UL 586 is specific to the nuclear industry. It has many more tests like heating tests, uh, physical battery tests, things that this uh, nuclear filter will be subjected to. And even in the case of an uh, earthquake, shades of Fukushima, uh, it should withstand all these pressures. A lot of, now we're talking a little technical. This is for the guys who have a little background in 
clean rooms and HEPA filter testing, but want to know more. The beginners got a little treatment at the beginning. Now, what is the difference between leak testing and efficiency testing? Pinpoint, the leak testing pinpoints leaks, the determines percentage penetration, the effort. I think there is some uh, network error. Yeah, there is some yeah. network Please issue. Please hold on. Um, uh, yeah, he'll be joining soon. Yeah. Dr. Swati, can you just uh, check? Call yes. The call? Yes. Yeah. yes, I shall do. Yeah, thank you. So this was always a technical session. But yes, please keep your questions coming. Even simple questions related to clean rooms, HEPA filters will be answered here. So uh, kindly type your questions in the chat box. Yeah, please wait. We are connecting soon. There's some network error, most probably from. Sir is in Mumbai and uh, there may be some network issue. I hope the session is going fine for you and uh, you can post your questions in the chat box right now. Okay, sir is back. Uh, how, how many slides was I? How many advantages happened at the bleed through? Satish, should I repeat it? Uh, 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 a slide before go, this. Yeah. Can you go just back? Yeah. Okay. Yes. It's from here. Differences yeah. between leak and efficiency test. Uh, the leak testing is done on site, the efficiency testing is done in the factory. The leak testing pinpoints leaks while the efficiency does not. The, the percentage penetration is measured by both. We use a monodisperse aerosol for the efficiency testing and a polydisperse for the leak testing. The leak testing is a field test where the efficiency testing is done in the factory. Hot DOP, dioptyl phthalate. This was the aerosol of choice for many years then was found to be carcinogenic, a type B carcinogenic, causing cancer in rats. So it's now being discontinued, being replaced by PAO, polyalpha olefin, or DHS, or DOS, or Nina oil, various alternatives. We use the hot aerosol for efficiency and the cold aerosol for leak testing. Some people use the hot aerosol for leak testing 
because they have large systems, but this has its attendant problems. Aerosol photometers are used for both. The failure limit in a leak testing is 0.01%, regardless of whether it's a HEPA filter or ALPA filter, because you're not testing the efficiency of the filter. You're just testing the efficiency, the leak of the entire structure in the filter, including the framework. Whereas in efficiency testing for the standard HEPA filter, 99.97 down to 0.3 micron, it is 0.03%. Bleed through. As we said, the ISO 14644 part three allows you a penetration of 0.01% leakage. And if you are getting 0 0.02, the entire system is rejected. This could be to various reasons. A lot of people select the filters at the laminar flow velocity. A lot of manufacturers will give you your filter at 0.45 meters per second or 90 feet per minute. And the installer installs it at 125 or 250 feet per minute. Obviously, your efficiency is going to go down. Or the test particle size. The standard says 0.01% when challenged with the average size of 0.5 microns. Now, if you use a cold DOP aerosol, you're fine. But if because you have a 40,000 or 50,000 CFM system, you tend to use a hot aerosol generator. That's going to give you particle sizes of 0 0.2, 0 0.3 micron. Obviously, this test is going to fail. The filter is doing its job, but the specification is not being met because you are challenging with the wrong particle size. The one major request, when you're doing the part in situ part testing, please use even multiple Cold DOP generators, they use Blaskin nozzles, they're much cheaper than the hot generator. Otherwise, you're going to have problems. And once the client feels that the filter is inadequate, he's going to make you change it, even though it's the right filter. The perfect filter media. A few years ago, they developed a PTFE media, polytetrafluoroethylene media which was trying to substitute the glass microfiber which we use for the HEPA filters. The PTFE media provides superior benefits, including inert chemical properties. So it's always used in the electronic industry. There's no outgassing. More uniform fiber distribution, hence less pressure drop, smaller fiber diameters, better efficiency and pore size which reduce resistance with higher filtration performance to achieve substantial energy savings. Uh, the capital cost is the bottleneck. It costs about 50% more than the glass microfiber filter media. But I, as time goes on and the manufacturers develop and get economy of scale, I'm sure eventually this will replace all the glass microfiber filter papers. And share another secret with you, these, this media is washable, though none of the media manufacturers suggested or recommended. I had bought a Honeywell air cleaner for my house since I have a few allergies. And I used it for about two months. And then my wife said, should I wash the filter? And I said, sweetheart, I manufactured over half a million HEPA filters. You cannot wash a HEPA filter. You have to, it's a throwaway filter. And she pulled out the manual from Honeywell and it said washable. So I learned that these filters are washable. I guess right now we don't have a protocol for washing and that's not adequate. That'd be too troublesome. So they have not introduced it. But in the future, we can look forward to a washable HEPA filter. antimicrobial filters, new class of superior air filters with high efficiency and an interesting antibacterial functionality. 
Atomic layer deposition sees Zeno nanorods on the surface of expanded PTFE, combining effective filtration and inhibiting the growth of viable organisms. McDonald's is using this. Donald, uh, Donaldson is using, not McDonald's, that's my burger, I'm feeling hungry. Donaldson is using this and all the airplane filters they make. Other technologies using nanotechnology are also used, some of which are very interesting. One, uh, the nano cells break down the bacteria cell, the shell of the bacteria shell, so the entire thing leaks out and is rendered useless and prevents any further production. Under development is an active virus filter in the form of a thin carbon nanotube mat providing filtration and virus disruption at the same time. Uh, the Donaldson filter, the airlines have been telling you it's absolutely safe. You're more likely to get run over in a car, by a car if you're walking on the road. Uh, Donaldson had the Nelson Laboratories report that bio HEPA filter efficiency achieved a viral removal efficiency of greater than whatever, whatever, when challenged with bacteriophage X174 virus organisms. However, on studying the airflow pattern, it is clear that the air leaving the outlets is not laminar. When it leaves the grill, it is totally clean. But when it passes over other passengers for reaching you, it leaves you vulnerable to infection. I put the Y in uppercase because you are most important. You see the flow pattern. As it, if you were to have it like a laminar flow, which would like be an operation theater or a farmer production unit, the air would come straight from the top and flow straight down in even lines, not allowing any cross contamination. Uh, your best bet now is to sit in the aisle seat where the air comes down and then blow down to the through the window section, which is the most vulnerable section. Uh, I know a lot of men who are traveling and they say, oh, my wife likes the view, so I give her the window seat. Don't believe that. This is a live problem. And when they first bandied about absolutely safe, 100% safe, then they reported Oh, there were a few cases and the maximum cases were near the window seats. So uh, please don't keep your wife near the window seat. Uh, so, uh, sir. Right to, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, this this was a very important um, information that you shared with us that I'll see uh -huh. it is the safest. And I have a lot of comments coming up at LinkedIn and uh, Facebook Live also related to this one. And most of them have commented like window seat. <laughs> Are the safest? Yes. That's why they put the wives there. <laughs> <laughs> they know they know it's not the safest, but they like to put the wives there. So, so, so can we can can you repeat, sir, why why aisle seat is the safest? Yes, I'll repeat that. If you follow the air pattern, the air leaving the grill, the ducting and the uh, is from the the blue portion is the dark blue portion is where the air is coming out from, and it's sent out through those nozzles, as you can see, where the arrow becomes red now. Right. And it flows down and it's collected at the bottom of the, on the side of the plane. As I repeat, if it was a laminar flow, they would have a full sheet of supply on top. Maybe eventually they will make uh, planes with a laminar flow, if this thing continues. But right now it's a turbulent flow and it comes down. The air in red, if you see, comes down, passes over the aisle seat. Hmm. So he's the first guy. He's not getting contaminated air. He's getting totally clean air from the outlet of the HEPA filter, the bio HEPA filter, which has knocked out all the viruses and the bacteria and the particulate matter. Right. And now it's, if the chap in the aisle seat is contaminated, that is carried forward to the person in the window seat. Uh, if you can Google right away, you'll probably get some report on the window seat. There was a uh, blog in the newspapers on that. And mm -hmm. it goes down via that and comes down. 
So you are not getting first hand, you're getting a sort of second hand air, like you have passive smoking. This is passive air you are breathing, passing over somebody else and then coming to you. Great. Yes. Yes, Sansa. So a lot of questions right, on that. Yes. Um, window seat was the answer at uh, LinkedIn. Also, people were giving uh, different reasons for this. But I think okay, we have we, cleared the air here. And <laughs> let us move. Well, on. I've cleaned the air and cleared the air. Yeah. I've cleaned it before clearing it. I'm giving <laughs> you a very bacteria-free, virus-free air. And, and a, a good comment came like, in these days, the safest uh, seat is at home. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, no, no, but then don't say that because then if they want to fly, they'll go for Ashish or something, you know. Mm -hmm. They might take a trip by having something, LSD or Ashish. Anyway, <laughs> okay. the yes, safe change of contaminated filters. Uh, if you have a facility which has contaminated filters, please use the safe change methods. The filter meter traps the microorganisms, but does not destroy them unless it is treated with antibacterial coating. And the antibacterial coating also lasts for some time. Let's keep spraying it. The media is a formite on which the organism can survive for up to 72 hours. So the poor operators and guys who are removing the filters and handling them, they have to be protected. Bag in bag out filters are utilized to carry out these operations. Very simple device. You have a plastic bag around the rim of the filter there, and you have gloves fitted into that for removing and applying the filter. Uh, when a new filter is brought in, it's in a plastic casing. You put the plastic casing around that rim you see, insert the filter in. When you take it out, you put that plastic bag remains in place. You pull it out into the bag, take it out, then either incinerate it or biodisposal, whatever you want. But please protect your operators. This is highly critical. They'll be subjected to a very high viral load else otherwise. Negative air HEPA machines. Uh, we used to call them fan filter units. They were for, it's a HEPA filter with a pre-filter and a fan, which is creating the clean air. It used to be used for pressurization, wherever some positive pressure was required. Now that we need negative air, negative this thing, you can make makeshift negative isolation rooms with this. All the existing facilities, you have in these small nursing homes and all, you can use one of these units and make a makeshift isolation room. And all the manufacturers, when they were called fan filter units, a 400 CFM unit was sold for 40,000, but now they call them negative air HEPA machines and sell the same thing for 60,000. Well, that's marketing. Uh, we have some safety for the dentists as well, because in a dentist, the poor patient cannot wear a mask, he removes the mask. He's exhaling air at the same time. Also, these dentists use a lot of uh, suction devices and uh, water devices with high speed and high jet speed, which cause a lot of splatter. All this splatter can affect the dentist and the support staff. So this suction unit just draws the thing at, at about 100 feet per minute immediately, and then either you can exhaust it to the outside through a HEPA filter, or it can even be recirculated since it has been rendered safe because of the HEPA filter. Uh, the US governor makes HEPA filters mandatory in malls. New York governor Andrew Cuomo has announced that no malls can open till HEPA filters are fitted in them. The governor of New York has announced that air conditioning filters with the ASHRAE Merv rating capable of filtering COVID-19 particles or similar air exchange measures will be mandatory for large mall reopenings. Uh, this is not very practical. Uh, if you're going to start, you'll have to have major surgery. If you want to, you'll have to change the fans, you'll have to change the housings. You'll have to introduce millions of dollars worth of HEPA filters. It's very good for the HEPA filter manufacturers, but it's good that they're looking at it and they're paying attention to it. 
Angela Merkel issued a <coughs> press note about two weeks ago that ventilation is most important. We're talking of masks, we're talking of social distancing, but ventilation is equally important. Try to avoid air conditioned spaces. And when you have ventilated spaces, use, have good filters that all the air that is used for ventilation and for flushing is also clean. You will improve your indoor air quality simultaneously while preventing the spread of these viruses. So let's listen to Cuomo and Merkel and go ahead. The airborne molecular contamination is not affected by these particulate filters. Gas phase air filtration systems eliminate these pollutants, which are the true source of poor indoor air quality and odor complaints. H2S, SO2, CO, CO2. Media are available as custom blends and gas specific solutions. For example, activated carbon, activated alumina substrate impregnated with sodium permanganate. These work with adsorption and chemisorption. The EN 13779 gives the classification of indoor air quality based on CO2 levels. IDA1 is the high IAQ, two medium, three moderate, low, more than 1,000. All this can be controlled with gas waste filters. We come to the face masks. The WHO first announced that face masks were unnecessary. Now they've come around and said it is necessary. Uh, we should go one step further. And what works best is the N95 or KN95 or FFP2 face mask. N95 means nothing but, <coughs> excuse me has an efficiency of 95% to 0.3 microns. Now you would say the virus is 0.1 micron. So what, how does 0.3 micron help? The viruses and bacteria agglomerate on dust particles with an average size of 0.5 microns. So when you filter out 0.3 microns or 0.5 microns, they're effectively filtering out all the viable particles as well. We're making it in aseptic area. Now, these three compare, they're almost the same. N95 is European American standard, FFP2 European standard, and the KN95 Chinese. The N95 is a little lax. They don't tell you to check how much leakage comes across, whereas the other two talk about 8% leakage. The other exhalation, resistance, flow capacity, everything are more or less matching. They all tested with NACL. Uh, masks, there was a super spreader in the Starbucks cafe in Japan. And 62 people were in that restaurant and 40 got it. 22 escaped because they were the staff. They were wearing masks. All the other poor guys were eating and drinking. And uh, somebody in Thailand has invented a mask which you can open your mouth and sip and eat at quick intervals. But by and large, you remove your mask when you're eating and drinking. So that's proof enough that the mask protects you. And the mask not only protects you, the mask protects me and you at the same time. If I'm wearing a mask, I protect you. By wearing a mask, you protect me also. So please, masks are very, very useful. And uh, Trump may disagree, but then he lost. You know, so let's not go with Trump. Uh, I will not cover these changes in ISO 14644-3 because these are highly technical. And these relate only to people who are involved in HEPA testing and filter testing. And they can contact me separately. And because for the general masses, it will not be interesting at all. So we will do away with the next three slides for a 
four slides on common bases, and we come to the end of this talk. And I also teach salsa. I was the state level champion three years ago for salsa, Argentine tango, and cha cha. And I danced with three different partners for this competition, and their cumulative age was less than mine. Okay, thank you guys. Up for questions. Thank you, Sun, sir, for uh, a highly technical but informative uh, session here. Because few very general questions are uh, getting answered. Should we use the mask or not? Number one, mm -hmm. because a lot of um, uh, you may say information is percolating from different perspectives. Like if you are wearing a mask, then your oxygen uh, saturation levels are already down, and what to do and what not to do. So these all things have also come up from the scientist sides. But yes, which mask is effective uh, uh, for these times that we have made clear? Which seat uh, are you going to book when you are coming to Delhi? <laughs> that is <laughs> that is now clear. And I'm, yes, I'm, I'm going to walk. Okay, you are going to walk to Delhi. Okay, so yeah, and. Uh, uh, yes, uh, what about uh, the, the details about clean rooms, the details about filters, and there are questions also, very technical questions, and uh, uh, without wasting uh, more time, I'll ask them to you, because these are important. So we have first question uh, coming up from Mr. Prashant Pillai. He has asked a lot of questions. How to control VOC inside clean rooms? You use the chemical filters. We spoke about the chemical filters, gas phase filters. Each VOC has a specific uh, media which can control it to, to the nth degree. There's an international standard and which tells you what's, whether you have a G1, G2, G3 status. And you can use the relevant filter. You select the filter. The specific filter medias will solve your specific problems. Yes. Okay, he has again asked another question. Most effective method to reduce VOC other than filtration? Okay. Uh, I would not be competent to comment on that. My field of specialization is filtration. Thank you, sir. I, I, yeah. How can we maintain low temperature in a negative pressure lab? The temperature is never a problem. There is no relationship whether it's a positive pressure or negative pressure. Only thing that happens with negative pressure, you would be losing some air, which you also lose in positive pressure. And the HVAC would be exactly the same method for a conventional air conditioning. No okay. change whatsoever. Okay. Uh, Mr. Kunal Roy has asked, how can we prolong the life of HEPA filter and develop better HEPA filter or challenges that biological products have for clean room? Right. Uh, good pre-filtration. The secret to having a long lasting filter is good pre-filtration. These standards allow you to use a filter for even 10 years. There's no restriction on that as long as within the pressure drop. And the pressure drop can be pretty high, up to three times initial pressure drop. Though at times now, people tend to go on it twice the thing because of energy saving. But with good pre-filtration, you can have two stages of pre-filtration. Let's say uh, F5 and an F9 filter. That will extend the life of your filter because it will not get loaded so often. I'll give you an uh, example at Garware Nylons in Pune, when I was a young engineer, the HEPA filter suddenly got loaded. You know, We were using it for about a month and then it was fully choked. So we said, this cannot happen. So we did a study and trying to examine what happened. And then I took the foreman out for a drink in the evening. And after a couple of drinks, he said, oh, the, we were drying out the pre-filters and fine filters. And the manager said, started without the pre-filters and this thing doesn't matter. And when they dry up, we'll put them in. 
And in 45 minutes, the entire system was choked. This was a system which would last you for three years. So you cannot, you have to emphasize the use of free filters and fine filters. As far as technology is concerned, yes, we are coming up with PTAP filters, which are more efficient, less pressure drop. You're, you're gonna have energy savings, better efficiencies, and the antimicrobial treating is now also very useful in making an area totally sterile. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay, sir. I hope uh, this question was um, answered. And Mr. Prashant, you can uh, directly interact after we take up the sessions also. Uh, he has asked, uh, can we know more about activated carbon filters and also nano titanium technology? Oh, we can, but as I said, that would be a specialized thing. I'd be glad to interact with that person on a separate basis. Sure, sir. So, Mr. Prashant, please connect today. with uh, uh, us uh, at Pharmastate Academy and uh, uh, your questions related to uh, highly technical aspects uh, will be answered. He has again asked, can stainless steel cladding B changes with cheaper aluminum composite panel powder coating for class 100 or 1000 clean rooms, class 100 or 1000? Else, Use which is the best method? Yes, sir. Uh, the uh, pharma people have this fancy for stainless steel. <laughs> they use stainless steel and IPA. I think they have some connection between the two industries. You know, the owners are the same. They use so much IPA and they use so much stainless steel. Not required. If you have a good powder coated uh, surface covering, it does not shed particles. It's going to be fine. Please save your money. Wow. So here is a wonderful uh, answer. Save your money here. Else, which is the best material for cladding on walks and roofs? Also, the floors of clean room is epoxy floors or vinyl floor good? A vinyl floor can be used if you have less load on it. You don't have any heavy movement. Otherwise, the casters and all of the things would cause problems. Uh, if you've got heavy movement around it, then please use the epoxy flooring. You get very good two component epoxy floorings which are resistant to any kind of abrasion and wear and tear. Yes, sir. Okay, what's the international specification for IVF labs? Uh, again, a specific thing, I'd be glad to take it up separately. Okay. Only warned that fellow, once I start talking, I don't stop. So he has to be on his guard. Yeah. Okay, so uh, Mr. Prashant, you can connect uh, for the specific questions that you have. Uh, we will answer the general questions that are coming up. Uh, kindly speak on free radical and hydroxyl ions that can break down particles and microbes. I feel it's equally important as HEPA and free filters. Uh, not my field of expertise. Okay, sir, next. How we identify testing frequency of HEPA filter? There is a code ISO 14644 part three, 2019, which I didn't uh, go into. It says the filters have to be tested annually. The previously it was every six months for class five, ISO class five areas, but now for all general and grade A and B areas, now generally everything is annual. However, the British standard has an exception to this, and they want the testing done every six months. I personally would be comfortable with testing every six months because it's nice to come and see your plant every six months. You do your DOP test, you do your particle count, you do the velocity and flow rate test. You see all your deficiencies, you see all your problems. But the standard ISO 14644 part three dash 19 stipulates one year, and the Annexure 1, EU GMP Annexure 1 also now stipulates a year. It used to be six months earlier. Now they've gone on to one year. So it's an annual basis. Okay, sir. Then uh, I'll take up a, a question at Facebook. What will be the frequency for HEPA leak test on OSD facility? Same answer. ISO 14644, 
part three, 2019 annual basis. However, recommendation do it every six months, which was the old standard. So the new standard, in fact, now they've gone for risk management, you know, QRM. And they say, if you can provide, for example, you have continuous monitoring, you need not do it even annually. You can wait till you feel that it's gonna cause a problem. You can do it once in two years, once in two and a half years. But as I said, I come back being an old man, I prefer the tried and tested method of six months. But standard wise, one year. And if you use QRM and uh, continuous monitoring, two, two and a half years as well. But as I said, I, I, I like, there's always an importance to physically see your system and get the feel of it. Great, great. Thank you, Sansa. So these are the questions related to those filters. Otherwise, we have comments and queries related to the aisle seat and the uh, window <laughs> seat thing. Um, so you have already made it clear uh, related to that confusion. So anyone who wants to uh, interact directly uh, with Sant Advani, sir, we are opening up the session. And you can unmute yourself and ask the questions directly. Uh, Swati. Yes, sir. Could I suggest that let us do all this on email now? Okay. Okay, son, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The specific okay, question because it will need that. I would like to have all, for example, IBF. Hmm. I would like to have all the data in front of me hmm. so that I do justice to the question. Okay. The general questions I was only too happy to answer. But when you want, for example, if he wants on activated carbon, hmm. I can give him seven, eight substraters when I prepare for it, when I'm ready with that, with that answer. That I would like to do on an individual basis. They can contact me through you directly, whatever, no issue. I would rather come through you so that you're in the loop, you know? We will help, you, uh, help uh, 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 you out, sir, here. And uh, we will uh, connect the concerned person with you directly. So, um, okay, sir. So let us uh, close this session. And uh, uh, before yeah. we close, Swati, there, uh, one thing to tell, like uh, uh, there is a WhatsApp group uh, mm -hmm. uh, where you can directly interact with sir. Uh, if you want to ask anything, you can just join and And that particular group is for posting all the updates. Suppose we are having a next uh, you know, session. So we'll post the, uh, all the information related to that session there so that you can easily register. And uh, anything else related to HEPA and all uh, clean room filters will be posted there. So please join that group. That is one request. And also, sir has prepared a you know uh, a course on uh, HEPA filters and clean rooms basically. Uh, so you can also just enro enroll to that course, and we are going to post the link of that course uh, in the WhatsApp group only, so that you can directly click and join that or enroll that course and learn from it. Of course, it is free for you. Uh, we are not charging anything. So just uh, if you are interested, you can enroll to that course and do it. Yeah, that is what. Yes. What is so, yeah. so two pieces of information here. Join the WhatsApp group for all the updates from Pharma State Academy uh, through uh, for our speaker, Mr. Santadwani. And that group is accessible to all the people and your teams also. If you want to bring along your teams, you can uh, let them um, uh, give this link and uh, uh, they can join and ask questions also. And I'll connect uh, anyone who wants to connect directly with Sansa also. And uh, second one is a free course, which is there at Pharma State Academy. So that could be uh, accessed by just registering at the academy and enrolling to the course. So uh, this is all from my side. Sansa, your uh, comments at last here. No, it was an interesting session. There were nice questions. Certain questions were outside my field of expertise. So I didn't want to, you, you have some idea, but you don't want to fool. I can only fool some of the people some of the time, not all the people all the time. So no, uh, I, but as I said, those specific questions, I will take up with these gentlemen on a separate basis. After I'm fully prepared, I have the basic data with me available. So I can do justice to their questions. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. You know? Thank you. Thank you, Sansa. And as you said, uh, you are an expert here, and uh, whatever you say, we are going to follow that. So if Thank you, you say I'm not, <laughs> I'm not comfortable with those, then 
it's 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 over to you sir because you are the expert you have researched this field and you have the final answers with you so thank you so much for the session sir we we thoroughly enjoyed and thank you all the participants for joining us we will be uh, bringing more sessions um, and um, uh, more uh, details about uh, our programs uh, through uh, sant advani sir because um, this topic is now very important highly relevant for all the healthcare professionals the pharmaceutical industry including um, uh, manufacturing and all those things so this this topic is getting more and more important day by day and it's high time that we scientifically design our facilities and use information scientifically to do any uh, any to make any choices that we have as we saw that most of the answers were coming like a window seat will be the safest but the answer lies that i'll say seat is the safest because of the air flow signs that happens there so um, make uh, scientific decisions uh, related to um, these um, uh, particular informations and um, questions that you have so uh, this is over from our side um, uh, we are signing off here thank you all for joining us uh, keep your questions coming in the whatsapp group and you can even mail us through pharmacy state academy